Now, Touch Designer works in layers rather than a single program that we would experience in something like processing. Everything in the window here is flowing in a pipeline. So the out is the end of my pipeline. And then I have the movie file and my noise are the start of the pipeline that come together, something happens, and then they go to the end. So we can almost think of Touch Designer as a left to right program rather than a top to bottom program. There's also different elements of where we have these layers. If you scroll your mouse wheel back or push the U key when not selecting anything, it'll take you what we call up a layer. So in my navigator at the top, it says I'm in nothing. If I scroll inside, it now says I'm inside project one. So kind of like how we can have tabs and processing, this is a way for us to organize code inside different sections inside Touch Designer. We call these comps, containers or bases, and we're not really gonna get into them in these videos just because it's slightly too complex for what I want to explore in the few hours that we have. So all, I, all you need to remember is things are most likely gonna flow from left to right when you connect things up. And you connect things by adding something. So I'm gonna double click a blank spot anywhere on my network, and I'm gonna add a movie file in I'm just gonna, so that's the top menu and movie file in. You can see it's given me this image that is a banana that's being loaded from the touch designer defaults. And now if I was to add something like, I'm gonna double click again and add a transform. The transform has nothing in it. And I get an error message that I can click that says not enough sources. And that's just because the transform needs data to be able to do something to it. So we connect things by coming to our movie file in Highlighting these, you can see it changes purple when I go over it, and these are called the outlets. I pick up the outlets, and it gives me this little cord that I can pull around. I'm still holding my mouse button. And then I can drag and drop it into the transform, and we can see that my error message goes away, and I now can visualize my banana inside the transform. And the transform allows me to change that texture in a unique way, so I can rotate it, I can translate it, which means move it up or down. I can change its scale. I can change the background color of the window if I wanted and loads more. So I'm just going to right click and reset all there. So that is the general process inside Touch Designer. We have something that we create or load from file. So that is the creation, the generation or the control of an object. We then pass it into some other operators that allow us to change and control them in lots of different ways. So for example, I could rotate this upside down, scale it down a little bit, and then I could pass it into something like a level. And the level is going to allow me to change the color that passes through this object. So up here in what we call the parameters window, if you don't have one, make sure you push P on the keyboard to toggle it on and off. I can go to the RGBA tab and decrease the amount of red, green, but keep blue at maximum. Uh, let's turn green all the way down and red all the way down. So now all that's passing through into my viewer is the blue color from the original image. I could then pass that to what we call a null that has no purpose, it doesn't do anything. It's just a very useful way of storing or terminating our pipelines. Remember, it always goes from left to right. And a null is a good way to signify the end of a pipeline. And that is the general process. Whether I was doing it with tops or sops, if I bring in a sphere, I could pass a sphere to a transform sop. Again, I could rotate it. We're not going to see much, uh, so let's change that to a rectangle. I could rotate it, but now because I'm working with SOPs that are shapes, I get three axes rather than two, so I have X, Y, and Z. I can still scale it down. Uh, my shape doesn't have a texture yet, so I couldn't do something like the color manipulation I just did, but I could still pass it back to a null and terminate the chain. So regardless of whether I'm working with tops, which are textures, chops that are data, sops that are shapes, all of them have the exact same process, processes. So for example, a constant means that I could make a number. 
I could then pass that number to something like a math and say, okay, I want whatever that number is times 10. And then I could pass it to a null to show myself that I'm terminating a chain or my pipeline. And that is generally how all touch designer networks work, is you're going to have a bunch of these that lead into each other. But most importantly, I can use my chops or my constants to control my rectangle. So I'm going to click on my transform. And let's say instead of it's ha it having a rotate of 20, I want it to have a rotation on the X of whatever this value is. So to do that, I'm going to activate this viewer. And to do that, there's a little plus sign in the bottom right corner of all of these windows. And that means activate. If I activate a chop, you'll see its border disappears, but now I can move my mouse over it and highlight it green. When a value is highlighted green, I can pick it up and drag it. And that means that I can link somewhere. So Touch Designer is actually going to write a lot of the programmatic code that we would ever need on its own. So I'm going to select my transform, highlight my channel so it's green and I've got the mouse selected. I'm going to drag it all the way over into my transform parameters window. You can see when I hover over a parameter, it changes from dark gray to light gray. Over rotate X, I'm going to let go of the mouse and pick relative chop reference. And this means it's going to make a link. We can see the dark gray dotted line appears saying that a value has been taken from this null into this transform. And now I can deactivate my viewer so I can move my chop again. But now, if I click on my constant and change my value, so we'll move the slider, we can see I can control the rotation of this shape, depending on what the number is in here. To give us a bit more range, I'm going to click on the math, and I'm going to change my multiply back to 1. But I'm going to go over to the range tab and say from 0 to 1 to 0 to 360. And this is doing the same as what the map function does inside, uh, inside processing for us. It's going to take a range of numbers coming in and change them to a range of numbers that we specify. In this case, if I move the slider on my chop, it goes from 0 to 1. This math is now going to range that 0 to 1 to 0 to 360. So a full rotation on the x. So you can see I can move all the way over and it does 180, 360. So already, we've actually written quite a lot of code without actually having to type a single line of code at all. And we're going to use this principle to build that fun, responsive, reactive environment to whatever audio track you pick. Uh, I would recommend something that has a lot of beat to it, so like a dance track, just so it's much easier for us to analyze. Because if you use something like classical music or music that doesn't have a background beat, it can be very, very hard to read signals that are useful inside our program. So remember, pipelines from left to right, we connect everything by picking up the outlets and taking these chains. We can only connect purple to purple, blue to blue, and green to green, pink to pink, and so on. There's no way for me to take the movie file out from my top and plug it into the inlet of a SOP because this is a 2D texture and that's a 3D shape. They're just types that don't mesh together. It's like me trying to set a string equal to an integer in processing. It would just generate an error rather than working. We can use this referencing technique though by activating a viewer and dragging and dropping data into another operator generates this gray link rather than a hard solid color link. And that means that we can use data and values throughout our program without having to program links. Because if I expand the rotation tab, you can see it's written a piece of code here that is Touch Designer's Python for going to this chop, getting its value, and using it somewhere. Again, I appreciate if this seems a bit too confusing or you've not understood what we're doing here, but all you need to know is that pipelines go from left to right. Same color objects can only connect to same color objects. Purple is 2D, blue is 3D, and then green is data. That, those are the most important lessons that we need to take away from this. And I'll leave that as a, a quick introduction that you can keep revisiting if you want to, to revisit how to do something. One final tip that I would give you is often you'll see me controlling values by hovering over a channel, normally a constant. 
or inside a transform and you'll see this little window appear. Now I get this window by using a three button mouse. I hover over the parameter I want to change, hold my middle mouse and go over whether I want to change by 0 0.1, so hundreds, tenths, units or tens. And then I, while still holding the middle mouse, I just drag left and right. And that allows me to really quickly change a value without having to type things a lot. Same with constants. So their slider on the right here only goes from zero to one. But I can use this middle mouse function to allow me to make a change into the 10,000s very easily. It's just a super neat way of being able to change code really, really quickly. Okay, with that done, I'm gonna stop this here and leave this as like a reference introduction video. In the next one, we will get started on the actual project.